Dear Marrowlinks, welcome to this recall session about psychiatry MCQs which came in in the INI CET November 2021. There were, there were about four MCQs which came in which was related to the subject of psychiatry. Let's dive into it and understand it better. So the first question is which of the following is a true statement about Korsakoff's psychosis or Korsakoff syndrome. Now there are two important syndromes we need to know right one is called as Wernicke's encephalopathy another one is Korsakoff psychosis mostly they would have framed the question related to it. So what are the choices given? Antrograde amnesia with the loss of recent memory. I'm sure if you have listened to the videos in related, relation to Korsakoff psychosis, you know the answer is this, the first one, choice A. That's the answer because Korsakoff psychosis is one of the very few conditions where you will typically see antrograde amnesia. Antrograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia happens in many, many, many conditions. But antrograde happens in very few conditions. And one of those important conditions is Korsakoff's psychosis. So what else can happen in Korsakoff's psychosis? In Korsakoff's psychosis, you typically see this condition with a chronic presentation. The present has a chronic history of cognitive decline and psychotic kind of symptoms. Along with it, obviously they have thiamine deficiency, that is the problem which leads to Korsakoff psychosis. The most important characteristic feature you look for is confabulation. They have asked multiple times in exam, don't forget about it. What is confabulation? The gaps in memory gets filled with some stories. The gaps in memory gets filled with some stories. Let's imagine. I ask a patient who is suffering from Korsakoff psychosis, what did you eat for the breakfast today morning? Now he has forgotten what he has eaten for the breakfast today morning because of his Korsakoff psychosis. So what does he do? He confabulates, means he creates a story. So what does he do? If I ask him what did you eat for the morning breakfast, he says, oh sir, today morning the climate was so good sir, Bangalore climate, really, really good. I love it. So he kind of filled up that gap with some story that is exactly what is called as confabulation which can happen in Korsakoff's psychosis sometimes in exam halls in viva halls we do the same thing right confabulate so that's what is Korsakoff's psychosis now a very important point you need to remember is in relation to Korsakoff psychosis uh, the area of damage is not very clearly known in, in Wernicke's encephalopathy, we know it is the mammillary bodies which and the periaqueductal gray matter area. Whereas in Korsakoff psychosis, generally it is not one specific area which is involved, but commonly the areas which are involved are the anterior thalamic nuclei and mammillary nuclei. Anterior thalamic nuclei and mammillary nuclei are the two nuclei which are specifically known to be affected in Korsakoff psychosis. In relation to this, what we are talking, you also need to know about another condition which is also asked many times in exam which is called as Wernicke's encephalopathy. Now when you are talking about Wernicke's encephalopathy, please remember it's an acute or an emergency kind of a condition. It's an acute or a emergency kind of condition. So the patients come with few hours or few couple of days history. That's how they present acute or an emergency condition. And these patients typically have GOVA. What does GOVA stand for? Global confusion, ophthalmoplegia and ataxia and ataxia. Okay, so this is where this choice is given, right? Global confusion, ophthalmoplegia and ataxia. They are more features of Wernicke's encephalopathy. Very commonly asked question is, where is the lesions in Wernicke's encephalopathy? It is mammillary bodies and periaqueductal gray matter area. Periaqueductal gray matter area. You, you typically end up seeing petechial hemorrhages. You typically end up seeing petechial hemorrhages, which are very characteristic of Wernicke's encephalopathy. Again, this is also due to thiamine deficiency, which typically happens. So the answer for this question is the choice A, which is antrograde amnesia with the loss of recent memory, which happens. 
talking about the next mcq which of the following is true statement about ocd which of the following is a true statement about ocd what is ocd obsessive compulsive disorder what are the choices they are given commonly associated with comorbidity of depression now you need to understand a lot of patients with ocd have basically ego dystonic thoughts ego dystonic thoughts means their ego is not okay with these thoughts they don't want these thoughts or they don't want these compulsions but it keeps happening because they don't want it but it still happens they are more prone for anxiety and depressive symptoms so secondary depression is very very common that's a true statement what about the other statements here atypical antipsychotics is the first line treatment absolutely not what is the first line treatment for it ssris are the first line treatment can you give antipsychotics in ocd patients yes it can be given in low dose it can be given in low dose in order to augment in order to augment the effect for example even when we speak about resistant depression we say low dose antipsychotics can be used to augment the effect the same way if you are giving ssris and trying to pa treat patients with ocd but it's not responding very well sometimes low dose antipsychotics are added to augment the effect but it is not the first line drug ever prevalence is about 7 to 10% in the general population it is it is it is half of it they generally say it's about 3% in the general population 3% in the general population is the common prevalent one in india they have reported much lesser uh, numbers but world over it's around 3% of the general population where ocd could be seen contamination is an uncommon obsession contamination is an uncommon obsession actually it is a false statement in fact it is the most common obsession you see contamination fear of contamination or fear of dirt or fear of germs is the most common obsession we end up seeing in patients what is the most common compulsion the most common compulsion we see is washing is washing of course kaplan and sadok says it is checking so it depending on which resource you are reading you might give different answers but majority of the books would have typically said washing is the most common compulsion to be seen so this is with regards to this a simple question which is given here commonly associated with comorbidity of depression which is uh, the true statement related to ocd which of the following is a novel antidepressant they have asked which of the following is the novel antidepressant lorazidon is a antipsychotic vilazidon is a antidepressant azinapin is an antipsychotic blonanserin is an antipsychotic blonanserin is an antipsychotic so what is important here you need to know the answer for this question is which of the following is a novel antidepressant answer is vilazidon now why would you call this as a novel antidepressant novel antidepressant if you take typical antidepressants you have the ssris right ssris now what does ssris do they decrease the reuptake they decrease the reuptake is decreased and thereby thereby what do they do they increase the serotonin levels they decrease the reuptake and thereby increase the serotonin levels that is what typically is done by ssris but why do you call vilazidon as a novel antidepressant the reason vilazidon would be called as a novel antidepressant is because one it has some amount of reuptake inhibition it has some amount of reuptake inhibition and thereby it increases the serotonin levels but it also does something very importantly which is more novel of this vilazidon that is it is a 5 ht 1a partial agonist 5 ht 1a partial agonist understood that is the reason it's called as a novel antidepressant because it works on the 5 ht 1a partial agonism it is known to be maybe relatively faster in its action clinically they say it might have a relatively faster action now vilazidon is one of the important novel antidepressants we have
By the way, another MCQ question which can come in is which is the anxiolytic which is again a 5-HT1A partial agonist which is multiple times asked in exam. Which is the uh, anxiolytic we are talking about? The anxiolytic we are talking about is buspirone. Buspirone, right? Buspirone is a 5-HT1A partial agonist which is also good to know. A few other interesting points in relation to the same slide you should know is Azinapine is a very important antipsychotic because it is not used intramuscular or intravenous or oral. The correct route of use is sublingual. Okay, it's sublingual administration. Otherwise, the bioavailability is a problem. So, sublingual ad administration is very characteristic feature of azinapine. That is the reason why they can ask you that as an MCQ question. Which of the antipsychotics is administered sublingually? Answer is azinapine. And if you take azinapine, you are not supposed to be eating in the next 30 minutes or so. Because if you eat, uh, the efficiency of the medication might come down. So, that is something you need to avoid. And it has to be administered sublingually. That's the recommended way of mode of administration of this antipsychotic. Understood? So, with this, we'll go to the next slide. Most efficacious drug in smoking cessation. Now, most efficacious drug in smoking cessation, which of these are one? Now, bupropion comes as two forms. SR is sustained release. XL is extended release. There are two forms of bupropion which is used. Both can actually be typically used in smoking cessation. Minute differences in the way the concentrations appear are there. But otherwise, bupropion can be used whether it is sustained release or extended release, whichever patients tolerate better, you can use in smoking cessation. So, this can be used in smoking cessation. Verenicline also can be used in smoking cessation. Of course, nicotine gums can be used in soaking, smoking cessation. Rimona Bant. Rimona Bant is basically again used in smoking cessation. What does it do? It works against cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoid receptors 1, it is an antagonist. It is an antagonist of cannabinoid receptor 1. Understood? Now, the thing is this, this drug is currently not used and it has been banned because it has significant side effects in terms of increasing suicidality, increasing depression, increasing psychosis. So, it has been banned and since about 2010 in India, it has not been used. It came in mainly for anti-obesity kind of a drug. We know a lot of psychotropics would make people put on weight, right? So, we remember when Ramona Band came, we thought all these patients who would have antipsychotic related weight gain, we could give Ramona Band and help them. But unfortunately, the drug went out of favor because a lot of these patients ended up de developing very severe neuropsychiatric symptoms, worsening of depression, worsening of suicidal ideas and psychosis and it has been banned now. It is not being used. So, this is not the answer. Now, out of these three, what do you think is the most efficacious? A lot of studies say each of these things are equally efficacious, but some of these studies have reported a better efficacy by Varenicline. Varenicline is the most efficient one in tobacco cessation. And what does this Varenicline do? Varenicline is basically a drug which is nothing but alpha 4 beta 2 partial agonist. They've asked multiple times in exam. Don't forget, varenicline is a drug which is nothing but alpha 4 beta 2 partial agonist. Again, an important point you need to remember is varenicline is also sometimes known to worsen the neuropsychiatric symptoms. So, in patients who have neuropsychiatric problems, you should be little careful about giving this medication because the symptoms can increase and lead to problems. That's one another feature you need to know in relation to this drug. So, varenicline is the best choice. It's supposed to be the most efficacious out of the other drugs which can be used. All the four drugs have been tried and have been found to be effective to some extent. The most efficacious one is varenicline out there for smoking cessation. Understood? With this, we come to end of this session. Thank you very much.